There's no question that climate change is happening. If someone says there is a, there's doubt in the scientific community, it's because they haven't read the scientific literature. There is almost zero doubt. There is no peer-reviewed paper that can be shown that anybody has been able to get through a scientific process to say that climate change is not occurring. It's one thing to experiment on somebody's house and try whether or not this works if the house fails. We're experimenting with the planet. And when the Gulf Stream shuts down or the Amazon becomes, becomes desertified, the permafrost melts and releases methane and accelerates the process, we could be right royally screwed. Uh, New Zealand has made a deal with five Pacific Island nations for them to be evacuated when the water levels become too high. Not because they're nice people, they've made financial deals with Tuvalu and Kiribati and a few others because it's a given. These countries are going to be abandoned. The first Inuit village in Alaska has been being translocated right now because of rising water levels eroding the city away. Now it's only 500 people and they're Inuit, so who cares, right? Well, it's going to happen to New York City, it's going to happen to Miami. The whole sub-Saharan African disaster is probably you know, at least half related to climate change. We've been somewhat protected in North America by the pollution over top of us that reflected sunlight, um, which they didn't have. So that's why they got the droughts first and ran out of food first. A huge source of alternative all around us. It's called conservation, and it's the lowest cost new source of energy we have at hand. Since 1973, alone improvements in energy efficiency have resulted in a 50% reduction of our daily energy use per GDP, which is the same as discovering 25 extra million barrels of oil equivalent every single day. Clearly, saving energy is like finding it. It is not what people think. They think the solution to the problem is finding new energy. But the lowest cost solution is saving it. And we have a long way to go on saving before we have to worry about finding more. And we shouldn't allow that to stand, particularly the architects who are doing decent stuff. should not let people, the same architects of the world, go around saying we're building a green building without proof. And we've called people on it. I mean, uh, Peter Busby in Canada is quite a famous architect. He's the greenest architect in Canada. And he got booed out of a talk at uh, Efficiency Vermont because the guy, put, look at this building, it's, you know, it's a wonderful green building. And Mark Rosenbaum, an energy geek from Vermont, said, I've never in my life built energy as yours. How dare you call this green? And so they slithered away. And eventually there are absolute numbers of energy and resources that we can start you know, comparing people and saying, well, look, mine's bigger than yours. Uh, you can start saying, oh yeah, mine's smaller than yours, less environmentally impacted. My energy bill is small. What's the size of yours? And that's the kind of yardsticks we should be using to compare. Um, so let's get the resource use properly figured out because recycling consumes lots of energy and resources. Steel, for example, if you buy a 100% recycled steel, steel stud, it uses about 60% as much energy as if you had bought a brand new stud. And in both cases, it, you, with a new style stud, it uses about 10 times as much energy as a wood stud. A little bit more, actually. So a, a virgin growing wood stud uses a sixth as much energy as a fully recycled, 100% recycled steel stud. So just because it's recycled didn't make it good. The process is important, as important as the product. I don't believe you can get a green building without having the right process, without having people, the client, understanding what they're doing and why they're doing it, without having every team. And that's a biggest challenge. It's not the technology. It's not the economics. I've been involved in projects. The, the most successful ones were the ones where we had the team on board. The owner got it and all the, the consultants and the contractor got it. That project was the tightest budget and the highest performing building.